September the 3rd, 2020. Guys, we got a space weather and a weather update, and, and they're both interconnected very much more than people realize. But uh, Nana, the tropical storm, is moving, came in across Belize, and it's going to move straight across basically into the Pacific Ocean. Omar at the top is moving up to the top and into the Atlantic. But this uh, disturbance number two is going to be a problem. A tropical wave located off the coast of West Africa is merging with another disturbance located a couple hundred miles south of the Cabo Verde Islands, resulting in an extensive area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Development of the system is likely to be slow during the next couple of days while it moves westward, northwestward at about 15 miles an hour. And a tropical depression is more likely to form early next week over the central tropic tropical Atlantic where environmental conditions will be more favorable. Now you got this in the area in the red, that's where the two systems are merging. And just south of that, you have another disturbance that has a forty percent chance of development in the next five days. And what I watched it for a couple of days, there was a large disorganized system sitting right in this area. Uh, which you have another system now with a 20% chance of development. And then, a, and, but it wasn't uh, any surface rotation like we're starting to see now. But off the coast of Africa came a very dry uh, center of uh, circulation rotating. And now they are merging, and that's what we're going to be dealing with, guys. It's a pretty large area of storm. The uh, Saharan dust layer above it is kind of being pulled more north into the Atlantic um, and is not being effe as effective in the last few storms as we saw in the early season. And again, this is what we're going to be dealing with. There's really three areas. Two are merging, and that's going to be a problem. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. We the spaghetti models, again, are showing it moving straight towards the Caribbean. So you guys in the Leeward Win Windward Islands, Pay attention. Now, looking at space weather a minute, in the center of this graph in purple is the uh, speed of the solar wind that bombards Earth 24-7. And it's been elevated. It's usually around 300 100 kilometers per second. That's your average. And But you're looking at a seven-day chart. And you can see on September 1st, and I'll make a we'll look at a one-day chart. We had a peak, and that peak was up in the 600s, around 660 plus kilometers per second, guys. That's well over a million miles an hour. Think about that. It's almost impossible for the human mind to grasp that type of speed. But now we're down, getting into about 432. That's still 100 kilometers per second faster than normal, but it has gone down and back on uh, September 1st, guys, that's when we saw the big quakes down in the southern hemisphere. Now, looking at the sun, that solar wind is coming from this dark area, which is called a coronal opening at the uh, pole of the sun. There's also a small one at the south pole, if you want to call it that. And uh, that magnetic canopy that pulls the energy back into the sun is missing in those areas. Now, what we're seeing is some beginnings of the new solar cycle. And this is what's called a solar filament. And, guys, it's huge, probably about 200,000 miles long easily because the sun is 680,000 miles wide. And so this is easily a third of it, if not more. And it's a large magnetic loop, like a rope, that's dancing across the surface of the sun. And when they act, when they hit certain things happen you get um there's certain things that will trigger a release of one end of that particular filament or any filament first in the yellow and green areas this is today's date uh you've got the area where we're seeing that large solar filament and notice this is today's date it's called the magnetic connectivity solar scape viewer the planets are connected through the sun i mean via the sun by large plasma tubes. They're magnetic portals. Right here in the very blue slither is where the Earth is connected to the sun today. That white area is because the Parker space probe is between us and the sun. It's passing inside that portal right now, taking measurements. For years, we've had the FEMA space probes, and they've been studying these space portals. At the top is another group of planets you can't tell. But right there in the silver is Mercury. 
Now what happens, and again the yellow and green areas where we're seeing that <coughs> uh, large solar filament, a triggering event can happen when it moves across a magnetic portal like it's about to do with Earth. So what happens is, and I'll show you a couple of videos at the end of this, it triggers a release of one end of that large filament, a couple thousand miles long, and it can cast what's called a uh, kill shot. There's a couple of them have happened. They just missed our planet, but it will con definitely release a coronal mass ejection. And that portal, again, we're, is about to be in contact with that large filament. Guys, those solar portal portals that we're talking about, um, connectivity, to a, a plasma transfer event or flux transfer event. It happens every eight minutes. There's a connectivity between the sun and the earth every eight minutes, a transfer of energy. And uh, this is what they're talking about. Solar filaments can last a long time before they disappear. Some survive for weeks. When solar filaments become unstable, they can either fall back into the sun or erupt into space, sending a coronal mass ejection away from the sun, which can come towards Earth if the solar filament is well positioned. In other words, Earth facing. Just like coronal mass ejections from solar flares, but these are bigger. Look at this. This is uh, 2015. The other one I'll show you is 2016. As we were coming out of... Um, this one's 2015, excuse me, as we were coming out of the last solar maximum. Look at that. That's what's called a kill shot. The size of the sun is the white circle. The red disk is simply blanking that light or blocking that light so we can see outside. We would not see these events very clearly if you had that full glare. But guys, what you saw, again, would be called a kill shot if it directly hit our planet or any other planet with a filament like that, that dense, millions of miles long, then it would pretty much be fried. And when you think about the technology that man is concerned about, it all, uh, most of it comes from having electrical power, whether it's 5G or nanoparticle uh, control and manipulation and tracking that has to do with a lot of things on the menu coming up but when you see a filament released like that and you can back this up and watch it think of when the angel pours that file out upon the sun and the kingdom of the beast is cast into darkness god is in control they think a lot of people think technology is in control and it will be for a brief moment but when t god is tired of that when he sees and he hears the prayers of mankind that angel will pour that vial upon the sun. And then we will go back to the natural frequencies that God uses to communicate. And again, these um, flux transfer events are happening every eight minutes. That's crazy, isn't it, when you think about it. And that magnetic portal is a lot of times as wide as our planet. It looks like a spot on the sun, and it's much larger on that spot than it is on the earth. Guys, if you took an exact duplicate of the earth and the sun, as in, earth for, in, in other words, to scale, it would take 109 of our planets to go across the surface as we see it. And so, because we, you know, we're, what, uh, 8,000 miles roughly wide and the sun 680,000 miles wide. So it's a tremendous amount of energy to be transferred that quickly. Now, the, I'm going to do a video, uh, and we're only going to talk about these plasma transfer tubes. I think it's very interesting in the science behind it. But we're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.